This video is going to be an introduction to AWS code commit. We're going to discuss what code commit is, why it's useful, and how it compares to similar source control tools like GitHub. This is going to be a two part series. In part two, I'll walk you through how to use code commit in the AWS console. So let's just jump right into it. And at first I want to talk about very briefly, what is AWS code commit? So code commit is a source control service for Git repositories. And for those of you that aren't familiar with what source control is, it's just a practice of tracking and managing changes to code over time. It's also a place where we can store our source code, where we can view it, search for things, interact with it, so on and so forth. So code commit is an option for AWS users to host their source code on. Now by using code commit and AWS in general, you're going to take advantage of the fact that your source code is going to be secure, highly scalable and fully managed. After all, you are using the AWS cloud, which copies and replicates your data through multiple different availability zones. So availability and scaling are definitely not a concern with using code commit. And it includes familiar tools like code browsers via the AWS console for viewing and things like viewing repositories, pull requests, and of course, collaborating with your peers when looking at revisions and requesting changes. Now, code commit also allows you to use your existing Git CLI and all the familiar tooling that you may have already set up around using Git. So there's plugins that are available on things like Visual Studio Code and IntelliJ IDEA that allow you to integrate with your code commit repository directly from your IDE, similar to what you would have with other source control systems like GitHub. Now, the special thing about code commit is that it integrates well with other AWS services, the code pipeline being the one that you'll probably be integrating the most with, but also other ones like simple notification service and Lambda functions. And we're going to get into that a little bit more in the upcoming slides. So that's a brief overview of what code commit is. I want to take a couple of moments now just talking about the so what in this or why code commit is important in the ecosystem of AWS. And it has to do with AWS code pipeline, which is a CI or continuous integration and CD or continuous deployment tool on AWS that allows you to orchestrate applications from the source control to the build to the deployment steps. And so in a typical code pipeline, it consists of multiple stages. The first one is that source step. And using code pipeline, you have the option of using, of course, AWS code commit. Now you can also integrate with external tools like GitHub and Gitbucket and some other ones as well. But code commit is the one that's offered through AWS directly. Now the second typical step is the build step. And you would accomplish the build step using AWS code build. Now an extension of that is running unit or integration tests. Again, you would use AWS code build to deploy a testing environment to run all of those tests and report the results back to the code pipeline to decide what to do next. Assuming everything checks out and your tests are run successfully, then comes the deployment step. So first of all, we usually deploy to a staging environment. And that of course is done with AWS code deploy. Once we're satisfied with our results on staging, we can proceed to production. So this is what a typical pipeline looks like. And I hope this kind of makes sense where code commit stands in this ecosystem of continuous integration and CD tools. So next I want to talk about how code commit compares to other familiar tools like GitHub, definitely because it's the most popular one that most of us are probably familiar with. So on the left hand side here, I have code commit and on the right hand side, I have GitHub. So next we're going to go through a couple common features of both of these products and see where these two stack up against one another. So first of all, in terms of Git support, obviously both of these two things support Git support, including all commands and all familiar tooling that you already have set up around using source control tools. Secondly, we have the ability to run code reviews through pull requests. Both code commit and GitHub offer the ability to submit pull requests and have your peers view your changes and also leave comments. Next, we have security, and this is where there's a slight difference between the two. With code commit, you're going to be leveraging identity and access management, also known as IAM for short. So this means that you can specify users or roles or groups that have access to a certain repository and also specific AWS accounts that may have access as well. Using GitHub, this would be mostly user account based. So security for access to a repo would be based on a particular user account having access to that repo. In terms of user interface, this is again another area where both of these products are quite different. Now with code commit, it is a very bare bones experience. And I'll try to put some screenshots up here so you can take a look for yourself. Now I'm not saying that it's a bad experience using code commit in the UI, but it definitely leaves some things to be desired. You can accomplish everything that you're trying to accomplish, but the design is just not very user intuitive and it's kind of clunky. 
In terms of GitHub, it's definitely design oriented and you can tell that the developers knew what they were doing in the design category. Everything is located in an intuitive space and it's definitely a more pleasuresome experience to use over code commit. In terms of AWS integration, we briefly touched on this, but of course this is supported both for code commit and GitHub. In terms of triggers, triggers are also supported through code commit via SNS or simple notification service. Using SNS, you can capture changes to your repositories, including pull requests, including pushes and other events that are related to your repos, and then connect your SNS topic to either an email or maybe a Lambda function so that you can take some very specific actions in response to changes to your repositories. The counterpart offering in GitHub is webhooks, which allow you to perform some very similar functionality. Next is the notion of public repos. Code commit unfortunately does not support public repos. However, like I said earlier, it does allow for you to set up cross account access to your repositories. In terms of GitHub, of course, public repos are supported. That's one of the most popular reasons people use GitHub is for open source collaboration. And lastly is in terms of price, which is again an area where both of these two services diverge. With code commit, it's very cheap. In fact, the first five users are totally free to use code commit. And for every user after that, it's just an extra $1 per user. You also get something like five gigabytes of free storage. With GitHub, it's definitely more expensive. They use a tiered model and most folks that are operating in a team environment probably wanna use the team tier, which costs today $40 per user per year. So you can definitely see where the cost diverges between these two things. Honestly speaking, I'm not married to either of these two solutions. I can honestly pick either one and still be happy. I would suggest though, if you're already familiar with using one over the other, then just go with that. You're probably gonna save yourself a lot of headaches in the future. And of course, if you wanna stay completely within the AWS ecosystem, then go with code commit and you'll probably be fine. One thing I forgot to mention is that both of these two different tools support migration. So you can migrate your repositories from code commit to GitHub or from GitHub to code commit if you're not satisfied at any point. Now, just to close things out, I wanted to briefly talk about some additional features that I thought you should know about. The first one is one that we briefly touched on earlier, which is that you can set up notifications to receive emails on repository events. This is useful to keep track of what's happening in your repo or be advised of when certain security incidents occur on your repositories. Next is that Code Commit integrates well with AWS Code Guru for code recommendations. Now, Code Guru is a service that examines your source code for problematic issues such as a lack of error handling or even errors with logic in your code. It costs extra, but it's definitely handy if you're not so concerned with cost to get an extra pair of eyes on your source code before you deploy it to production. Now, lastly, is that you can create approval rules to enforce the review process on your source code. And this can include a number of reviewers setting where you can specify a number of reviewers that must approve your source code prior being able to merge the pull request into mainline. And you can also set this up such that the reviewers must be part of a specific IAM group. So for instance, you can set this up where you say you want two reviewers for every pull request. However, those two reviewers must belong to a senior developer group. So pretty handy for making sure your code gets the right set of eyes looking at it. So when part two is published, I'll put that on the right. And in the meantime, you can check out some of these other videos on the left. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.